Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're going to be checking out the game engine RPG Maker. Now we actually talked about this one a couple of years back, but this is a version 2. So if you're interested in checking it out, it is available up on Steam. This is a source available game engine. It's also available for free in a non-commercial capacity. So like you see here, you can download it. It's a free to play. Don't worry, it's not microtransactions or anything like that. There is a commercial version. So if you want to use this to make a commercial game, uh, there is an upgraded version that looks like about 70 bucks US for the upgraded version. Uh, but version 2.0 was implemented. And there's not really a ton in 2.0 that I want to focus on. So instead, I'm going to just jump in and show you uh, this engine in action. And then we'll go back to some of the details about it. So here we are. This here is uh, RPG Maker. Now, one thing I want to comment on immediately immediately i'm running this on my 4k display at 1080p so first off if things look a little blurry it's because i'm down sampling it but second the user interface is unusable on high dpi displays so do be aware all of these icons etc you just simply cannot read them so hopefully developers if you're listening to this you do need to add high dpi display support or if i don't know how to use it uh, please fill me in i am making a mistake in usability so, if you're wondering what kind of games you could create with this, the uh, name kind of says it all. This is for creating, uh, say, Paper Mario type titles. So, let's go ahead, launch this. I wasn't expecting so much music. So, here you can see in the example game, the kind of stuff you can do in the game world. So, it's a mix of 2D projected and 3D objects uh, in the world together. So, this is kind of uh, what the sample game is all about. And obviously, it has all of the systems in place for, uh, you know, an RPG-style game. So what you're going to find here is you go across the top, uh, you're going to have things like uh, support for uh, scripts. By the way, on the topic of scripts, you can create new scripts in the form of JavaScript. You shouldn't have to write any code at all. So if you're a bit more of the beginner area, uh, perfectly functional for you just to stay in uh, JavaScript land. There's also libraries available. So here you can see it's using 3JS and Howler. Uh, you can also bring in custom shaders. Uh, we also have, again, systems in place here. These are things like your battle system, title screen, main menu, events, variables in the world, and so on. You can also have uh, data, obviously, RPGs are pretty heavy in data. Data can be anything from classes to monsters to items to, to uh, tile sets in your world. This is the database editor for it. So you've got all the editing tools you would expect for uh, the aspects of your world. And then you can compose your world itself uh, in a combination. So here we've got, we're creating floor tiles. You can see it's got an auto tile functionality. So it fills in the blanks depending on what the closest proximity is. So if I do in the middle, it does there, whereas I do here, it blends in with the existing color, whereas if I do something in the middle of the water, uh, well, actually, it's not doing an auto shore in that case, but you see, it did, does have auto tiling support. You can draw new tiles basically by selecting over here, so I could draw an entire tree over top like that. Um, it does have layers. I'm not using the layers at this point in time. Layering functionality is available over here. Uh, you also have face sprites. Those are your forward facing things like the characters, etc. cetera. Uh, you have uh, mountains in the form of like kind of terraforming. So this is your voxelized territory. You can paint on top to add uh, verticality to your world. Uh, on top of that, we also have 3D objects. So 3D objects can be placed in the world, such as this house over here is a 3D object. Uh, so for example, I want to place a red brick house. I can add a red brick house into the world like so. So you're, you're kind of mixing uh, voxelized meshes underneath, uh, 2D sprites billboarded on top, and then 3D objects into your world. You also have the ability to place objects into your world. Objects would be things like this sheep over here. And then you're gonna see with the sheep, you can have some very simple logic in terms of how to handle it. So uh, when you touch this, you have this dialogue that comes out and so on. Uh, you've got control over uh, if it's a 3D object or a sprite or whatever there. Uh, you can have uh, various different movement. You can define movement along a different path. Again, you do have dialogue systems in here as well. You also have the ability to bring in photos, videos, songs, and so on. Uh, auto tiling support, wall support, etc. So there is a nice plethora of tools in here, but it is for making a very specific style of game. So if you're into that Paper Mario aesthetic, this is a purpose-built game engine for you. Otherwise, you're going to find a lot of the tools here, a lot of what we looked at, the various different uh, managers available here for handling all the different things, such as internationalization, keyboard events, again, systems and variables, etc. Uh, it's a lot like what you would expect from your typical RPG maker type uh, environment. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's pretty 
uh, straightforward. Again, if you want to extend it yourself, you can use uh, the uh, JavaScript programming language to create uh, additional plugins. And then when you are done, uh, you basically you can export out your project. I didn't mention this off the hop, but this guy can build projects for Windows, Linux, and Mac but it's also available on Windows, Linux, and Mac, which is definitely a nice thing. But here is how you'd basically go about creating an EXE of your game that you can now distribute. Now, again, do keep in mind, if you're distributing your game commercially, you are going to need that commercial license that you can buy on Steam. So that is what this DLC is all about. So otherwise, completely free to use. If you're just making games for fun, uh, it's fully functioning. Everything you want is part of the base package. So uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about RPG Maker, you can go to rpg-paper-maker.com. Uh, you can find a little bit of an overview of the kind of stuff you can make. So basically, it's for that JRPG style. Uh, you, you could probably ignore the billboarded sprites and create any kind of game you wish, to be honest. So you don't have to use the paper or RPG aesthetic, uh, but you're not going to get away from this type of game. It's very much set up for making JRPG or tactical RPG style games. Uh, it is designed for beginners, but uh, you do have the ability to create your own code later on. Completely free unless you want to commercialize it, one-time purchase in that regard. Um, it can, beginners can use it, but experienced programmers can create their own scripts using JavaScript. You can import your own OBJ 3D models as well. Uh, publishing is completely free, and you can commercialize for $79.99 on Steam. Uh, full 3D map editor, um, play objects and event system. So you don't have to get into the programming side of things if you're kind of more on the beginner side. Uh, you probably don't need to even if you're not a beginner. Uh, so there are event systems in place so you can have it like when you go within a proximity or you talk to a player or whatever, uh, certain events fire off. You can bring in your own assets or use what they provided. It's got collision handling built in. You can set up a 3D side battling perspective that is built in as well. You do have full control over the 3D camera or of course you could lock it out. You have tools for the UI um, and so on. So it, it's a pretty neat project, uh, but it again, very niche in what it is targeting. Uh, as I mentioned early on, it is also open source-ish. It's actually source available. So uh, all of the project is up on GitHub. As you can see, it is actively developed for sure. So this is a project uh, with support behind it. Uh, just do be aware the license is proprietary. Uh, so if you're interested in checking it out, the license again, uh, it is not an open source project. This is a proprietary license. And so uh, do be sure to check that out. And so uh, if you're working on, say, the Godot project or Default or another open source project, you think, oh, great, I'm going to pull some source code from this. Yeah, don't do that. That is not what the source is available for. But if you want to create your own custom version of it, you can. You just can't use it commercially. Um, they've also got a patron behind it. If you're interested, if you're wondering what language this guy was written in, 94.8% of it is C++. So this is a C++ project. I believe it is Qt uh, that they actually use as the framework or the application behind the code. Uh, so you want to jump in and take a look at how the code works. Uh, it is, again, it's not open source. It is source available. Another nice thing about RPG Paper Maker is it's got uh, solid documentation. So uh, all available online. I will link this in the linked article down below. So if you want to get in here and find out, say, how the event systems work, it is documented. You want to find out how the battle systems work, it is documented. So uh, if you have any familiarity with the RPG Maker style of um, game systems, this is going to be immediately comfortable to you. Uh, it's a fun system to play around with, again, completely free in a non-commercial capacity, but very genre-specific. Again, another really cool thing about this one is it is Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and it is source available. So let me know what you think of RPG Paper Maker. And yeah, they recently released uh, version 2.0. That was on uh, January. January the 14th, yeah, January the 14th of this year. Uh, it is under constant development. Very cool project in my opinion, but I'm curious what you think. Let me know in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.